Good morning, friends. Today is April the 18th of the year 2020. This is the day that Paul Revere made his famous ride. <laughs> Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on April the 18th, 1775. Well, on April the 18th of 62, I don't know if Mama made a famous ride, but she was in the hospital giving birth to me. So that was a nice day for me anyway to be born into this world. So I just am celebrating 58 years of being on this earth and looking forward to the day that we get to leave this earth when we hear the trumpet of God and we experience the dead in Christ rising first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Friend, that right there is a glorious statement in God's holy word. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You think of that. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Sometimes I think about that. I say, Lord, of course, we cannot wrap our heads around that. Do you realize on the day that we hear the trumpet of God, we will never, never sleep again. You think of this. We will never sleep. We will not get tired. We will not feel pain. We will not experience anxiety. We will not experience fear. Friend, the day the trumpet of God sounds, I know we have our minds on meeting Jesus in the air. And that's just the beginning, the very beginning of what we will experience. Never, ever, ever to sleep again. Never feel pain. Never feel sorrow never experience grief, anxiety, heartbreak, emptiness, loneliness. We will never ever again know what it's like to experience separation from a loved one. That's the reason why the Bible says that our eyes and no eyes have ever seen nor ears have ever heard the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. There's never been a set of eyes nor a set of ears that has ever heard the things which God has prepared for them who love Him. You let that sink deep into your heart today. 
try to wrap your minds around that. You can think of the most glorious time you've ever had on this earth. You can think about the happiest moment you've ever been on this earth. It could be when your child was born, when, your grand, when you first held your grandchild, when you was first married, when you went to Disney World for the first time. I mean, I don't know. But whatever your most joyful, happy moment in this whole life that you've experienced, you could multiply that by a hundred thousand times. And I don't think you would even scratch the surface of the glory that's going to be revealed in us. The praise we're going to receive from God the Father. The love that He is just going to saturate us with. Friends, our Father is going to just pour on us so much love and so much of His presence. I'm telling you, if we were not in a glorified body that He made, we wouldn't be able to contain it. You know, God's Word is derived from a word that they get the word dynamite from. I, I'm not sure if it's dymo or something like that, but his words are explosive. His words are powerful. <laughs> Praise God. And his word is life changing. That's why when Jesus said Lazarus, it no doubt shook the grave, it shook hell, it shook everything. It shook Abraham's bosom. Lazarus, come forth. Now, friend, let me tell you. If you want to hear a good anointed song about that moment when Jesus called Lazarus, come forth, listen to Carmen, his song, Lazarus, come forth. Woo, glory, that song is anointed. And there's coming a day. I'm not, I don't know what words he will use. But whatever words he uses will specify that only those who are redeemed by God will hear the trumpet call and hear his voice to wake up and come forth. Our friends and our loved ones and our parents and our children who have died in Christ Jesus will hear the voice of God first and they will arise in their glorified bodies. And then we will hear and then we will be transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and we will ascend into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And at that moment, at that moment, all fear, anxiety, torment, our labors will all be done away with. We, my friend, will be in the everlasting presence of Almighty God, never to be separated from Him. What a glorious day that's going to be. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus Christ, for God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him 
would not perish, but have life everlasting. Friend, ask Jesus to come in to your heart and be your Lord, your Savior, your Redeemer. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to cleanse you from all right unrighteousness. And friend, let me tell you, those who will call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, will be saved. That word saved means to be delivered and set free. Well, friend, before I end this video, I just want to say one thing. Um, I have been reading certain parts of the Bible and expounding on parts of it. And that's the way I read it. When I read God's Word, I expound on it in a way that my country mind... <laughs> can understand. Um, you know, I've teased people that I have a PhD. That means that I have the mastery of being a post hole digger out at my daddy's farm. When it was my daddy's farm, he's in heaven now with mama and um, the other siblings on it. But let me tell you something. I was, me and my brother John was his post hole diggers. And if you've never dug a hole <laughs> with a pair of post hole diggers, you're talking about working some arm muscles and wrist muscles and all. Praise God. But let me tell you, I don't have a PhD. But when I read God's Word, I need to read it. And then I think about what they're talking about. And it's just like when, when God gives gifts unto men, God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But you know, it doesn't hurt to say God gave apostles. God gave prophets. God gave evangelists. God gave pastors. And God gave teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and he gave us these for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith, until the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. And that's God's will for you and I to unify in the fullness of the stature of Christ and to come into the unity of the faith. Because the Bible says, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. Friend, when the trumpet sounds, whatever our shortcomings are, they're going to be made up at that moment because God is going to fill us with himself. He is in us and we are in him. We are one in Christ through his blood. Friend, if you don't know Jesus today, ask Jesus and he will meet you. He will comfort you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. He will forgive you of your sins. And your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. God bless you, my dear friends.